morning everyone thank god for another sunday we trust that the lord will bless us this morning as we share his words together let us pray father we thank you for the privilege to be in your house again this morning as we share your word please speak to our hearts bless us with your word today and let life and light come to us in jesus name we pray amen somebody say amen. amen acts of the apostles chapter number one we'll start reading from there acts of the apostles chapter number one today we conclude our series of teaching as we look at empowering the harvest empowering the harvest empowering the harvest and we have said um, we have said that the harvest or empowerment it means to give someone the license or authority or power to do something empowerment has to do with giving somebody license to do something and who has been licensed to do something it is the harvest and the harvest i'm defining another um, way the harvest in this service in the first service i define the harvest as the bride of christ waiting for the bridegroom but in this service i want to describe the harvest as those who have been drawn to the father who have been drawn to christ by the father those who have been drawn to christ by the father those who were out in the world and they have been brought into the sheepfold by the father those who have been raised up on the last day those who will be raised up not everybody will be raised up on the last day it is the harvest john chapter 6 please put your hand in acts that's our key verse this morning acts but in john chapter 6 verse 44 jesus said something like this no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him and i will raise him up on the last day those who have been drawn to christ by the father and those that will be raised up on the last day these these ones are the harvest who are the harvest the harvest are those who have been given the ministry of reconciliation those who have been given the ministry of reconciliation second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 to 21 talks about that that christ was made poor for us that through his riches we will no longer be poor he said therefore if any man be in christ is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new and all things are of god who have reconciled us to himself by christ jesus and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation the harvest are those who have been given the ministry of reconciliation can i tell you this you have been saved not just to sit in church but you have been saved you have been empowered to bring others into christ to christ you have been saved to reconcile men back to god you have been saved to reconcile men back to god you have been empowered to reconcile men back to god by the holy ghost who are the harvest the harvest are those who are now in christ second corinthians 5 17 therefore there is now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus there's no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus second corinthians 5 17 if any man be in christ is a new creature all things are passed away all things have become new those who are now in christ are the harvest so as i begin to say this if that is your story then you are the harvest and you have been empowered 
You have been licensed by God to do his work in these last days. And finally, who are the harvest? Romans chapter 8 verse 9. I like this. That's why I want to read it. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, I like this last phrase. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So, who are the others? Those who have the spirit of God dwelling in them. Does the spirit of God dwell in you? Does it dwell in you? Or you have the spirit of the Antichrist. Or you have the, there are some people, they don't have the spirit of God. They have the spirit of quarreling. Everywhere they enter, there must be a quarrel. Oh, I know some people like that. <laughs> if things are just working well among a people, just introduce them into that group. Quarrel has started. They have the spirit of quarrel, not the spirit of Christ. Those who have the spirit of God, they are the harvest. Does the spirit of God dwell in you? If the spirit of God does not dwell in you, it doesn't matter how long you spend in church. You are not of his. You have not of his. When Paul was going to be saved in Acts chapter 9 verse 15, God said, I will, Paul, I have called him and I will show him what things he will suffer. Acts 9, 15. What things he will suffer for my... But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. Paul is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. That is what you have been saved to do. There is nobody that is saved to sit down. You are saved to bear his name before Gentiles. Gentiles are the unbelievers. Before the kings of the earth and before the children of Israel. You have been saved to proclaim the name of God everywhere you go. And that's why he has given you that power. That power. Please, I beg you, get the tape of the first service. Some of those things are mentioned there so that I don't, in this second service, I want to focus on how to be empowered. That's my focus. And how to stay empowered. Because we say we have been empowered, the, the, we are empowering the harvest. The harvest must be empowered to be able to do the end time work. How do you get empowered and stay empowered? Because many have been empowered, but they cannot stay empowered. Acts chapter 1, let's go there. Acts chapter 1. is a long read. Do I have all the time to read it? Okay, verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to both to do and to teach. Verse 1. Look at that verse 1. I can spend the next three days talking about verse 1 alone. Look at it. Jesus was not only a teacher of the word of God. Jesus was a doer of the word of God. All that Jesus began both to do, he did it first before he taught it. Jesus did it first before he taught it. All that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Don't just be a teacher of the word. Be a doer, a practitioner. When you say people should not steal, you should not steal. When you should say, when you say people should not lie, you should not lie. This is why evangelism is good. For those of us that go for evangelism, evangelism is a checker for us. If I'm preaching to you, do I do what you do? All that Jesus began both to do. Please, I'm giving you an assignment this morning. 
When you get back home, begin to atomize all that Jesus did. I will tell you some of them this morning. All that Jesus did. Begin to atomize them one by one. And ask yourself, am I doing it? Because John chapter 14 verse 12, he said, The works that I do, shall you do? And even greater. So begin to what all that Jesus did. <laughs> am I even doing half of what Jesus have done? All that Jesus began to do. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was casting out devils. He was he was doing great things for the kingdom. He was preaching the gospel to the poor. All that Jesus began to do and to teach and then began to atomize all the teachings of Jesus. And it's one of the teachings we want to look at now. And verse 2, until the day which he was taken up, after he, he through the Holy Ghost has given commandment unto his apostle whom he had chosen. Let's jump to verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and all to the uttermost part of the earth. My disciples, you cannot do this assignment, this last day assignment, unless you have received power. And what kind of power? The power of the Holy Ghost. So what is the empowerment that we have received? Is the power of the Holy Ghost. How do I know? Verse 11. Which also, which also said ye men of Galilee. Okay, verse 10. And why they look steadfastly towards heaven. I'm rushing. Maybe I should take time and, and settle down so that you can understand it. There are so much in this chapter. That we need to get. Verse 9. After Jesus have told them. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When he has spoken these things. While they were still looking at him. Speaking to them. He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And I'm sure you have remembered. I preached in this place. That the last word of a dying man. Is very important. You take the last word of a dying man very seriously people when my father was going to die my my uncles and my in-law and my cousins they were asking me what did he say they wanted to know what he said <laughs> what did he say because people take the words of a dying man very seriously when jo jacob was about to die he called his sons it was there he began to pray for them reuben you you will not excel. <laughs> and it happens to Reuben like that until a man of God came and prayed for Reuben. Reuben shall not die. Reuben shall live. Let his men not be few. And the cause of his father was averted. But Reuben was walking under the oppression of his father until Moses prayed for Reuben, the man of God. The dying words of a man is very important. And this was the last word Jesus said. He said, don't worry. For you to be effective, for you to do carry out my assignment, you need the power of the Holy Ghost. After he has said that, he said, when you now receive this power, you will be my witnesses everywhere. You will be my ambassador everywhere, reconciling men back to, your, to, to me. And then he was taken up. So you understand what we are saying, verse 10. And why they were looking steadfastly towards heaven as he went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Somebody will receive an angelic visitation today. Your amen was not loud, so... <laughs> yes, you need it. You need it. These two men appeared in white apparel. They were angels. And they said, verse 11, Ye which also said, Ye men of Galilee, Why are you standing and gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. The choir used to sing, he's coming back, 
again. Christ is coming back, coming back again. Glory, hallelujah, bless his name and lift him up. Praise God, he's coming back again. But listen, before he comes back again, what are we supposed to be doing? He told them, receive power, then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Jordan and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And the disciples, verse 12, they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olive, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they have come in, they went to the upper room where they stayed, both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Aphios and Simeon the Zealot and Judas the brother of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus was with his brethren. And chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was come, the Holy Ghost came upon them. So that what God said I will give to you to empower you has come. So the Holy Ghost is the spirit of empowerment. That's the point I'm trying to make. Let it be registered to you. The power of empowerment, the spirit of empowerment is the Holy Ghost. When you got saved, now listen to me, this is important. When you got saved, what came to you is the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what came into you. And that's why he said, when the spirit of God is not in any man, is not a child of God. Now that the spirit of God is in you, you have been empowered to do the work. But to stay empowered, you need to be filled again and again with the Holy Ghost. Is somebody hearing me? Are you hearing me? When you got saved, the Holy Ghost came upon you. Thank God for it. But that Holy Ghost that have come upon you, you need to be filled again and again with the Spirit of God to stay empowered. I can show you in scripture. Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 19. Okay. Let's start from verse 18. Be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. But be filled with the spirit. So Paul is comparing being drunk with wine with the spirit. I don't know why he's doing that. But I'm sure you know that a man who is drunk with wine is under the influence of an alcohol. Paul is saying, don't be under the influence of an alcohol, but be under the influence of the spirit. Be filled with the spirit. Don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess. Don't be on. As a matter of fact, why did Paul say this? Some people in the Ephesians church, they were shacking beer. They were shacking alcohol. <laughs> they were shacking. Some Christians still drink. They'll tell you, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Do you have, do you have stomach problem? <laughs> Paul said, don't be drunk with wine. Where in his excess, but be filled with the spirit. So this is how to stay empowered. Is to be filled with the spirit. I don't have all the time. I can show you from scripture again and again where people were filled with the spirit of God. Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the spirit. In Acts chapter 4, the Bible says they were filled with the spirit again. Acts 4.31. He said the place where they prayed. Acts 4.31. Look at it. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. 
This is not chapter 2. Chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. In chapter 4 again, they were filled. Church, that first feeling is good enough, but can't sustain you in these last days. So you need to be filled again. How do I know? Matthew chapter 25, from verse 1 to 10. There were 10 virgins. Five of them were foolish. Five were wise. The foolish one, why were they foolish? The Bible says they had no oil with them. They were Christians. They were born again. They had their lamp. Read the Bible. They had their lamp. Both of them, the wise and the foolish. Oil represent the Holy Ghost. They had their lamp. And the bridegroom delayed. And because the bridegroom delayed, all of them slept. Both the foolish and the wise, they all slept. But as soon as the bridegroom came, welcome the bridegroom. The, the wise one, they trimmed their lamb because they were filled with the spirit again. And their lamb began to burn. But the foolish one, they had no oil. And they went to the wise, please give us oil. And the wise said, no, what we have is just adequate for us. That's why salvation is personal. <laughs> Go and buy for yourself. Before they came back, the door was locked. And the bridegroom said, I know you not. May that not be our lot in the Jesus name. But how is it possible? Because the wise, they trim the lamb. How do you trim your lamb? How do you get filled with the spirit on a daily basis? So that you are continually empowered for this last day's work. I said that's where I want to dwell on. So we already know to be empowered is the power of the Holy Ghost. To stay empowered... Look at it. Verse 21. Verse 19 of Ephesians chapter 5. Oh, I like this. I like this. Verse 19 of Ephesians chapter 5. He said, verse 18, And be not drunk with wine we are in his essence, but be filled with the Spirit. How do you get filled with the Spirit? He said, speaking to yourselves in psalms and in hymns. And spiritual songs. Another translation says. Songs of the spirit. Singing. And making melody. To the, to, in your heart to the Lord. Verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things. Unto the father. Of our Lord and savior Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always. This is how to be filled. With the spirit. I will explain as I read two scriptures to you now. Scripture number one. I told them in the morning service. There were five scriptures that changed my entire life. I shared two with them in the morning service. I will share two with you in this service because of time. I will keep the remaining one to myself. When I have time again, I will share it. Scripture number one that changed my life. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. I and the children, I, behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Zion. That is the scripture. You were born to be a sign. You were born to be a wonder. You were born to be a sign. And they wonder. You were not born to be people to be casting out devils from you. You are the one to cast out devils from people. You were not born to be a problem to the world. You were born to be a solution to the world. This was Papa's talk all while he was alive. I and the children whom God has given to me, we are made for signs and wonders. So Papa was not a problem to the, to the world. Papa was a solution. Everywhere he went, he was a solution. And those of his children who also believed like this, they were also signs and wonders upon the earth. You are to cast out devils everywhere you go. You are to cast out demons everywhere you go. You are to change the world everywhere you go. You are a sign, not a problem. Somebody say, I'm a sign to the world. 
are not the problem of the world. This is what you ought to be. Scripture number two. I'll tell you why I'm telling you this scripture. Because if you don't know these things, you cannot be filled with the path. You will not see the necessity to be filled with the spirit of God on a daily basis. And you will not spend time in doing it on a daily basis. Scripture number two. Romans chapter eight, verse 19. This was the one that blowed my head more. For the earnest expectation of the creatures waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The creature, their expectation is that they are waiting for the sons of God to manifest. Romans 8 verse 9 says, those of us that have the spirit of God, we are his sons. Is that not true? Yes, we are his sons. But you are, but you are not in the flesh, but, the spirit, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So if you have the spirit of Christ, you are a son of God. And the Bible says that in, in John chapter 1 verse 12, as many that has received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So when you believe in Jesus and the spirit of God enters into you, you become a son of God. And brother, sister, the creatures are waiting for you to manifest. So if you do not manifest, the creatures, their expectations will be cut short. Oh, you didn't hear me. If you don't show up, somebody will die because you did not show up. If you don't show up, somebody will die a sinner and go to hell. And God may require his blood in your hand. If you don't show up, somebody may carry his sickness and die with that sickness. Because that sickness, you are the one that ought to remove that sickness from that person. He said the creature are waiting earnestly for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are waiting for you and I to manifest. They are waiting for us to appear in the scene. Hey, if Elijah did not manifest, the Zarephath woman would have died. Her sons would have been, she would have died with her son because she was going to eat her last meal. She was going to eat her last meal with her son and she would have died. But Elijah appeared. The creatures are waiting for you to manifest. You are not too old. 70 years, 90 years, 100 years. You are not too young. 7 years, 20 years. You are not too young to manifest. The creatures are waiting for our manifestation. This was what blew our, my head when I was young. And we are running with this world. If I don't manifest, somebody will die. So I need to manifest for people not to die. And I can remember I told my father, the man who, does, who cannot stand, the man who is not standing cannot carry others. So daddy, let me stand first before I can carry others. If you manifest, it means you are standing and you can carry anything that God brings across your way. You need to manifest. Why? Because somebody's life is tied to your manifestation. Your family's greatness is tied to your family. How do we know the Idaosas today? Because one young man, Benson, Andrew, Idaosa manifested. Today, the Idaosa family can never be hungry. Whether you pay your tithe or you do not pay your tithe, forget it. <laughs> is somebody listening to what I mean? Because somebody manifested. Your family's greatness is tied to your manifestation. Your family survivor is tied. He said, for the, the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the son of God. If you are a son of God, you, the creatures are waiting for your manifestation. And the only way to manifest 
is to have the power of God come upon your life not once not twice but on a continuous basis how do you do this let me close with this how do you do it he said speaking to yourself that scripture speaking to yourself in Psalms and in hymns is also found in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 now so put, put Colossians 3 16 so that the people Colossians 3 16 thank you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual song, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Now look at this. How did he say you should do how the psalms, hymns and spiritual song come? He said when you teach the word of God one to another. But in Ephesians, he says when you are filled with the spirit, you sing to yourself. So he's talking about the same thing. That's why the Bible says, if we come to worship like that, if a man has a psalm, a man has a hymn, a man has a prophecy, because in your closet, you have dealt with God, and God has given you a psalm, God has given you a song, God has given you a hymn, you want to prophesy to edify the church when we gather. But listen, it is in two dimensions. Speaking to yourself, first of all, is to speak to yourself. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. And the only way the word of God dwell in you is by the Holy Ghost. So how do you get filled? How do you get filled? This is it. Take a scripture. Know the scripture. Spend time with the scripture. And as you spend time with the scripture, speaking to yourself, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and the staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares thy table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou has anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. That's Psalm 23. Psalm 121 verse 1 I will lift up my eyes to the hill from whence comes my help my help comes from the Lord who makes the heavens and the earth he will not suffer my foot to be moved he that keepeth me will not slumber behold he that keepeth Israel he that keepeth Friday will neither sleep nor slumber the Lord is my keeper the Lord is my shield upon my right hand the sun shall not smite me by day nor the moon by night the Lord shall preserve me from my evil he shall preserve my soul. The Lord shall preserve my going out and my coming in. What am I doing? I'm speaking to myself. If you don't know it, you can't speak it. I'm speaking to myself in Psalms. Speaking to yourself in Psalms does not mean like some people do. You carry the book of Psalms and you open it and you put it under your pillow and you will sleep on it. <laughs> no. Just imagine. I Sometimes when I'm in this. For the next two hours. I am in the presence of God. And then he said. Singing to yourself. Hymns. So you need to learn it. Hymns, like the one we sang this morning. I need thee every hour most. No tender love like thine can peace afford. I And in hymns and songs of the spirit 
For those of you in the music ministry, this is how you write songs. There are songs I have sung I cannot remember again. Songs of the Spirit. But thank God for Android phone now. Each time they happen, I just put my recorder on. So that when I finish, those songs, you can't sing them again. Songs of the Spirit. Inspiration come to you. Inspiration come to you. Inspiration come to you. Inspiration come to you. Balando, you are my God and my help. Who can be against me when you are with me, Lord? Who can battle with you because you are my help and my strength? Yevan to menasia, jandando si kamane. You don't need to be a musician to sing the song of the spirit. If somebody listen to what I'm saying, it comes from your spirit because you have received the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. I've just spent, I've just spent in the last 10 minutes trying to explain only verse, that few line singing to yourself in Psalms and in hymns and spiritual song. Imagine you are actually in the art. You can be in the presence of God for one hour. For two hours, for three hours, you are not yet done. That is why you must take time out to be able to do this on a regular basis. This is what the foolish virgin did not do. The wise, as soon as the master came, the wise streamed their land because the oil was already there. They did not need any engine to wind them up because on a daily basis, they were drunk with the Holy Ghost. They were drunk with the Spirit. He says singing and making melody in your heart. You can't be with the power of God and be having suicidal thoughts. It doesn't matter whether there's money in your pocket or not. As a matter of fact, you know that your food is taken care of. Because as you are living the presence of God, your meal is already taken care of. Father, I have not eaten for some days. I just need pepper soup. That's what I need today. Eh, somebody who God has touched will be pursuing you with pepper soup. Because that is what you desire. You have tarried in the presence of God. You have tarried in the presence of God. And he meets your... Eh, can I show you? Can I show you? Can I show you? John chapter 14, verse 12. He said, the works that I do shall he do and greater works than this because I go to my father. Look at the next line. Look at the next line. When you begin to manifest the works of God, look at verse 13. Put it for me. And whatsoever ye ask in my name, why? You have been in him. Eh? There is nothing you ask at that time. If, if you want the head of a man, it will be delivered to you. I have been sick once, real bad. It was my final exam in secondary school. It was an attack from the pit of hell. Suddenly, I remember some of these things and I got into the spirit. Eh, I had an exam to write. Eh, it was not the exam I was thinking about. I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. I began to sing hymns to myself. It is well, it is well, in the name of Jesus. It, you know, there are some songs you cannot remember. But when you are in the spirit, they come like a flood. Because the Holy Ghost is the one bringing them to your understanding. Hey, you have sung it in time past. Church, I'm telling you, get spiritual. Between now and Jesus coming, the church must arise again in power. And that's the only, that's the only way the world will believe. I told them in the morning service, let's stop criticizing people that are doing miracles. Because what you criticize is what you don't get. You that criticize order, where is the miracle you have performed? Where is the miracle? Eh? Moses was not a critic. Moses did a miracle and, and, and Pharaoh said, oh, so, oh, Moses, this is what you went to learn, eh? You are now a magician. <laughs> My magician can do this. So he called the magician and they all casted their rod. Yes. Magicians today are performing miracles. My native doctors today are performing miracles. They have removed their jars 
They have removed their buluku. They are now wearing suits. They wear tie like I'm wearing now. They wear coats. They are in church. They are performing miracles. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? They are performing miracles. But do you know something? The genuine always swallow the fake. Moses' rod swallowed up all their snakes. And Moses took the snake by the tail, not by the head. That is wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. When you walk in the spirit, God does not remove your senses. Hey, did I say something? <laughs> Some people who walk in the spirit, they are not like mad people. You cannot bath, you cannot brush your teeth, you cannot comb your hair. That is madness. Wisdom demands that you take care of yourself. You don't look to men as to be fasting, but you look to your heavenly father as you are fasting. Moses took the snake by the tail. Why not by the head? Because the snake will bite you by the head. So wisdom, you demand wisdom. Wisdom. So Instead of we criticizing the native doctor and the magicians that are performing miracle, let us do the genuine one. Let our miracle swallow them up. Don't blame the people. I don't blame the people. They are looking for where their problems will be solved. If I have the genuine solution, they will come to me. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Don't condemn the people. Give them the alternative. Give them the genuine one. They will pursue the genuine one. And you are the one who is to pursue and to do the genuine one. The miracle is for you. Before Jesus come again, the church must rise in power. The faith must be silent. The church must rise in power and perform genuine miracles. So that the faith can be silent. Stop criticizing the faith when you have not performed anyone. Keep quiet. If you don't know what to do, go to God and cry. And say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me. I have failed heaven. I have failed heaven. Miracles are not for pastors. Miracles are not for evangelists. Miracles is for, did you hear it? Did you read it that it's for the apostles? Did you read it that it's for the, it's for the prophet? Did you read it that it's for the evangelists? No. He said it is for the sons of God. And those who are the sons of God, those who have received Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, you and I, we are the ones who perform miracles. Let's go out with this. People will follow you when they see the genuine. People will come to your church when they see miracles. They will pursue you everywhere. Stand to your feet, let's pray. Stand to your feet, let's pray. Stand to your feet, let's pray. Say, Lord, breathe upon me afresh. Before you come again, before you come again, make me ready for you. Breathe upon me afresh. Breathe upon me afresh. Make it your prayer this morning. Make it your prayer this morning. Breathe upon me afresh. I need to manifest. Help me, Lord, that your glory will be seen in my life. Help me that I will not fail heaven. 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 Pasha Kalamana Maha. You need to go, know how to get the Holy Ghost. How to be empowered and stay empowered. To get empowered is the Holy Ghost. To stay empowered is the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, come afresh upon me. You cannot be this and be a sick person. You cannot be this and be a poor person. You cannot have this power and be lacking. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. If there will be a sickness, God will tell you, my grace is sufficient for you. Don't pray about this like he did to Paul. But not everybody is Paul. Not everybody is Paul. You have the power to operate in the supernatural. It is for your, it is your right. It is your right to operate in the supernatural. You have been licensed to do it. You have been licensed to do it. You have been licensed to do it. Thank you, Father. Help my tongue that I will not speak evil of things I do not know. Help my tongue not to speak evil of things I do not know. If you are sick here, you can reject that sickness. I ought to be a worker that, that if you are sick here, it doesn't matter what it is. Terminal sickness. You can pray for yourself now. I reject this sickness. Eh, eh, eh. Have you ever heard that there was malaria in, the, in Jesus? That Jesus had fever? Jesus had, 
Jesus had diabetes? It is not possible. What cannot be found in Jesus cannot be found in you. You are a son of God. If God cannot be killed, you cannot be killed. If God cannot be sick, you cannot be sick. Reject that sickness. Reject that ailment. Cause it from the root. It cannot dwell in me. Father, if this cannot be found in your blood, it cannot be found in my blood. Every blood sickness is terminated this morning. Is terminated this afternoon. Every terminal ailment is terminated now. I curse you from the root. Arthritis, diabetes, stroke, whatever name you bear. I command a restoration of those things that the enemy has stolen from you. You will walk with your feet again. You will use your hand again. You will use your mind again. In the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. La kushata nama yagada vosia. Libra la bashaka mana ya la bana ya. Libro saka ya nama. Every weakness in the flesh. Every weakness in your spirit. I, rem- I ask that they, they vacate you now. Yes, yes, right now, right now. That weakness, that heavy burden is lifted from you. In this service right now, that heavy burden is lifted from you. The spirit of God, the spirit that bring lightness, that bring, that bring, that bring, that bring succor in the place of heaviness. It comes upon you afresh. It comes upon you afresh today. Receive that spirit from God. A fresh touch from the power of the almighty. In Jesus name we pray.